Hello there, it's Dougie Taylor, um, Mr. Pelagonium, as I'm quite well known as, uh, and I'm back with another one of my video blogs today. Um, we should be finding out today, it's Friday the 4th, whether we're actually going to be moving uh, in around about a week's time. Um, should be finding out this afternoon, actually. I'm filming this at around about lunchtime today. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, if it doesn't happen, um, then it won't be until the very end of January because I'm actually uh, going away during the middle part of the month uh, undertaking my other love, which is photography up in Scotland. So there's going to be a bit of a break otherwise, but um, we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, I'm actually just going around my plants, having a little look today uh, to see exactly what happens uh, to some of them that they're, realistically, they are, Drying out slightly, the weather has been very dry in the UK uh, over the last sort of week or two even, really, since we returned from our holiday. Um, you may remember um, we, I came back, all my plants were fine, uh, having had the greenhouse shut up for over two weeks. Uh, and I'm just going round today, which is just nearly two weeks after I did my last watering, uh, just giving a little bit of a tipple. Now, they don't need a lot, literally, Two or three millimetres in the bottom of a saucer is more than enough for them at this time of year when they, when they are relatively dry. They don't need any more. Right, now I'm mainly needing to water plants that I perhaps missed last time. Some of them are a little bit, you know, too damp, so they didn't need watering last time I did a watering, which was the best part of two weeks ago. Uh, so I'm actually having to give them a, a little bit. Uh, today so but at this time of year the light levels are very low um, our atmosphere in the UK is quite dry we are having some really good dry weather at the moment uh, which worries me slightly because I think we're going to get really hit with some uh, awful weather um, at some stage in the winter but um, but they really do not need much they don't need much water I'm watering some of these plants I'm going round having a little look to see what these watering and for instance, that one does. It's very dry, it's, a, it's in quite a small pot, uh, but I will give that just nothing more than about two or three millimeters in the bottom of the saucer. Nothing more than that, just two or three mil, and that's more than enough, more than enough for it to soak up and last it probably the best part of two weeks. Uh, certainly doesn't need any more than that. So I'm just going around checking all of my plants. I've just checked this little batch. That one's quite damp, you see. So this one's relatively damp. So I won't touch that. I'll have a little look. Yeah, I think that one's okay, particularly zonals. Now zonal pelagoniums in the winter don't like a lot of moisture. Uh, because what you'll find, that moisture in them will get very cold and it will make the, uh, the leaves turn a very sort of, uh, go start turning red because they put the plant under a bit of stress. So the, that one's very dry, so I might give that a little trickle. But again, it is nothing more than a little trickle. Uh, just a couple of mil in the bottom of a saucer, and that's enough. They don't need any more than that. Um, they're not going to need much at all. That one's fine, that one's just got a little bit of weight to it. The regals on the other hand, these young regals, regals tend to grow a little bit stronger in the winter. Uh, that one is relatively damp, so I don't need to do anything with that. But regals do like to have a little bit of a growth in the winter. They like the cooler conditions, so do grow, particularly if the light's good. Just feeling that one, that one's a smidge, a little bit damp any also, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now, bicolours and tricolours, again, like the zonals, need to be kept really quite dry. That one, I don't think I watered when I returned from my holiday, but that is very dry now, so I am going to give that a little bit of a water. Again, nothing more than a couple of mil in the bottom of the smallest saucer, and that's enough for them to take up. There's a very young plant there, that's a seedling actually, I will give that a water, that's taken up. Uh, but I won't leave that uh, in there very long. That one's fine. But that one's a bit damp. So you're getting an idea. You do not want to give your plants too much. Note the ones that do grow, such as regals, particularly during the winter. 
Um, so they may need a little bit more because they like to put on a bit of growth during the winter. But anything zonal, your basic zonals, dwarf zonals, stellars, all of these zonal variants, they do not like a lot of moisture during the winter. So be very careful. Right, now I just picked up a regal here and something that you do get, um, you'll get you might get a little bit of white fly creeping on. Um, we'll see if I can show you. Let's have a look, see if we can uh, have a look in here. Now particularly that one. Uh, this under here you can see all the little white fly eggs. There are a few live white fly on there, not many, but they've laid eggs. And what I'm actually going to do is strip all of these leaves off that have got eggs on. They all need to be stripped off. Um, so anything that's got a, an egg on it, I will strip off. Uh, it's not going to do the plant any harm. Um, as is with always, when you've got a bit of a white fly on there, you will get a little bit of dampness and there's a bit of botrytis on that leaf. So all of these infected leaves need to be stripped off. Now it's not going to hurt, just be careful when you strip back. Make sure you get the whole sort of little leaf stem back to the main stem uh, and ensure that you get all of the uh, little, so you can clearly see the, uh, the, the white fly eggs underneath. So it's, it's easy enough just to, um, just to identify those and strip them off uh, to keep the white fly down and hopefully you'll eliminate it. Um, from the actual plant itself and obviously spreading to others as well. So you just need to be a little bit careful of, uh, of looking out for white fly on the regals and angels. Uh, and as I say, when you get white fly, you do get a bit of botrytis will, um, will start coming on the lower leaves. So they all need stripping out. You just need to be really careful of looking out for that, particularly on the regals and the angels and uh, plants of that type. Right, now with my um, big potted plants, it's just really a question of giving them just a little bit of a dribble around the sort of just inside the rim of the pot so that you're not getting a lot of moisture around the body of these plants, uh, but just enough to just wet their sort of roots that are in the big pot uh, and just that that's enough. Right, so it's just a little dribble around the inside rim of the pot so that the water is not really coming into contact with any of the stems but it's enough just to sort of tickle them and a little bit of water to run down into the roots in that compost so um, that's how I treat, that's how I water my really big plants uh, and that's enough to keep them going, they won't no need a lot just once a little dribble around the uh, inside rim of the pot uh, just you know well away from the stems uh, and that's enough to, you know, to keep them going. Okay, well that was just a bit of a, a snippet video today, just to sort of um, fill you in really with what I'm doing. There's not a lot going in, on in the glass houses at this time of year, just a little bit of watering now and again. Um, not much, I mean barely once a fortnight at the moment. Um, it is quite a strong feed that I'm using, it's around about sort of two-thirds strength so you know it's a relatively strong feed but they're just not getting it very often so um, you know you're not really overfeeding them but it's enough to keep them nice and strong and green and continually growing. Um, we had a particularly hard frost last night and I got my thermostat set on about six degrees which keeps the extremes of the greenhouse down to about three, three and a half degrees, which is which is fine really for uh, as you know to keep them growing through the winter. Um, you do need to keep an eye just on your your variegated leaf uh, variety, such as this one. I usually keep these the few that I've got in the line of the heater, uh, so they're they're being kept really at the sort of full six degrees that the heater is uh, pumping out. So that's how I treat those. The cooler area of the glass house is where my regals are because they like to be kept relatively cool and they don't mind the temperature really dropping down. So um, that's how I sort of uh, plan out the glass house. 
But that's about it for me for now. Um, I'll keep you informed about what's going on with our house move. If it does happen and when it does happen, I'll show you how I'm going to pack up my plants and how I hope to get them moved without too much harm. Uh, but we'll go on from there for now. In the meantime, click the subscribe button below if you're uh, new to viewing my channel and it'll be good to have you along. Um, so it's goodbye for now and I'll, I'll see you again soon.